One of the most essential tone sculpting tools used in recording studios and live sound is compression. I'm going to take you through some of the basics of compression with my TLC compressor pedal to help you achieve your desired tone. My first professional gig was playing in a wedding band. And a struggle I found early on was the constant genre hopping. We'd play a funk song where I'm slapping, and then we'd play a ballad where I'm playing real light with my fingers, and then a rock song with a pick and distortion. I found that I really struggled to keep my dynamics under control. And I realize now what I could have used back then was a compressor pedal. So when you jump genres or playing styles like a pick to fingers to slap, there is a range of dynamics. You play soft, you play loud, and not just from song to song, but from part to part, from note to note. Compression is a way to control the dynamics of your bass to give you a focused, even sound. So in my situation with the wedding band, I could have gone from a slap bass line to a lightly played fingers bass line to a pick line, and I wouldn't have had to worry about the dynamic peaks of those different playing styles. It's important to see compression less like an effect, say a fuzz or a chorus, and more like a tool, like EQ. It's something that you feel just as much as you hear. The TLC compressor is Aguilar's proprietary translinear control circuit. This pedal was designed for bass and features four controls, attack, slope, threshold, and level. All of these controls work in tandem with each other to achieve your desired compression. It's a great platform for going over the basics of compression as well. As compression is tricky to hear on laptop or cell phone speakers, I recommend grabbing a good pair of headphones. Let's start with the level. Now, as you compress your bass signal, you inherently lose gain. So, by using the level control, you can make back that lost gain and have an even sound with the pedal off and on. So let me show you an example. Everything on the pedal right now is at noon. Do you hear that volume drop? I'll be adjusting the level throughout this whole video. As we get different compression sounds and I tweak the different knobs, we're gonna lose volume, and I wanna get that makeup game back so that we have the same volume throughout. Next, let's look at the attack control. The attack sets the amount of time before compression begins after a note is played. So put simply, this controls how quickly the compression kicks in. On the TLC pedal, the range is from 10 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. I would recommend starting with the attack knob turned all the way left for the fastest attack time. And then gradually turn clockwise to find the attack time that feels best to you. Although 100 milliseconds doesn't seem like a very long time, if you have the attack set to the far left, when you pluck a note, you're going to hit the compressor immediately. Where if it's over to the right, clockwise, you hit a note, it might be the tail of the note that gets that, that compressor. It's more gradual. So a slap bass player probably wants the compressor to hit right on the top of the note. So they'll set it closer to the 10 millisecond side. If you play melodic fretless bass, you might want the compressor to kick in just after the note. This is something that you have to experiment with and set to taste. The threshold sets the input level at which compression begins. So imagine you have two basses, an active boutique bass and an old passive jazz bass. If you imagine this is your floor and this is your threshold ceiling, with that active bass, you might pluck a note and you'll hit that ceiling, you'll hit that compressor. Where with the passive bass, you might hit a note and you don't even reach it. What you're controlling with the threshold control is how much energy does it take to hit that compressor. So for instance, with the passive bass, you might not get there, so you want to bring that threshold ceiling down so that this is how hard you have to play to hit that compressor. And you control that by turning the knob clockwise. This bass has an active passive switch. So let me show you an example. Now if I go passive, I don't feel like I'm hitting that compressor. So let me turn up the threshold. That sounds great. The slope control, which is often called the compression ratio, 
sets the amount of attenuation applied to your signal. As you turn the knob clockwise, the dynamic range is compressed more. With the slope control set all the way to the left, you start with a 2 to 1 ratio, which is a pretty light compression. As I turn the slope counterclockwise, the amount of compression gets greater. Around noon, we get an 8 or 10 to 1 ratio, which is a higher compression. This is great for slap bass when you're trying to tame the peaks of those pop notes. As you go even further to the right, you get a very compressed peak limiting sound, which sounds like this. As you turn up the slope control, you're going to lose gain. So make sure to click your pedal off and on and adjust your level once you've found the compressed sound that you like. These tips are meant to be a kickoff point for you to find your ideal compressed sound. Compression is a very to your taste process and depending on the style of music you play and the instrument you play, your settings may vary. If you're looking for a more plug and play option, check out our DB599 micro compressor. This pedal is a VCA style compressor that has a simple two knob design. Simply set how much compression you want and then set the makeup gain. Finally, you may ask where in my pedal order should a compressor pedal go? A good place to start is first in your pedal order, but don't be afraid to move it around. What you run into it, may it be a distortion pedal or a chorus, may actually sound cool, it might be sonically pleasing. So have some fun.